Hello and welcome back to another VTTV video. We have a very special one for you today. Today we're going to be uh, yeah, we're going to be upgrading the storage in a Lenovo Think Center small factor computer, one of the tiny ones, like this guy right here. So this this Think Center has, a, I believe, a 256 gig SSD in it from the factory, and we're gonna go, go ahead and put this crucial 500 gig unit into it instead. Unfortunately, the user needs more space than what this came from out of the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you with me in the process of getting a new SSD installed in this machine. So why don't you come, come along and follow along with me. I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. All right, and as you guys can see, this uh, machine right here has a 256 gigabyte uh, SSD in it currently. Looks about it's half used. And uh, like I said earlier, the end user needs a lot more space than this drive can uh, deliver for us here. So we're gonna go ahead and take this apart and show you guys how this is all done. One thing that I do wanna mention before we go ahead and shut the machine down though, is you might wanna take a look at your hard drive here. If you see a little padlock over it, that means you have BitLock or drive encryption enabled. And if you are gonna be upgrading your drive, you need to undo or unlock the drive before doing a clone of the, of the drive on the computer to the new one. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a very bad time. Um, potential data loss, as well as the clone's just not gonna work correctly. So yeah, let's uh, get on to it. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and close any opening applications that we have. Gonna go ahead and shut down our computer down here via the shutdown menu. And uh, of course, there are updates that are queued to be installed. So we're gonna go ahead and wait for these to finish installing and we'll cut back to me having the uh, system open for you guys. All right, so our system is powered off. Windows is shut completely down. First thing we're gonna go ahead and do is on the back of the computer, gonna go ahead and unplug our power cord and set that aside. Next, uh, doesn't really matter the order, but we have a display port cable, we're gonna go ahead and unplug that and an ethernet cable. In your case, you may have additional cables, USB printers, uh, keyboards, mice, whatever have you. We have a uh, wireless keyboard mouse in play here, so that uh, really doesn't matter in this case. Next off, this large screw in the back here, you'll want to go ahead and grab your screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and undo that guy there. Go ahead and set the screw aside and put the uh, tiny down on the surface just like that. From here, the case will slide forward to the relative position of the system. So this will just move forward just like that and then it can be lifted off and set aside. Next thing you'll notice is on the inside of this, we do have space for a two and a half inch uh, SSD or a spinning hard drive if you needed a lot more space. But in this particular case, we're gonna go to the bottom. Underneath this panel, which slides to the front of the machine as well, we have the SSD carrier as well as the system RAM is here too. So if you uh, are uh, upgrading this system, you may want to look into uh, throwing some additional RAM in as well and getting a bit more performance out of it. As for that, I'm gonna go ahead and undo this little clip here. It just lifts right up and this will free our SSD from the motherboard. Go ahead and pick that up and you'll see that there is a bit of thermal interface material down on the board. If any of it does stick to the SSD that you took off, just go ahead and peel it off and put it right back there. There are a couple of uh, cutouts there where the pads would go. This is the SSD that we pulled out of the system. In order to get this cloned to the new drive, we're gonna go ahead and use one of these. And this is a NVMe to, to USB-C to uh, USB 3 adapter. Our drive just goes in just like that. We'll go ahead and set that to the side and work on 
getting our new SSD put in. Here is our new SSD. It does come with a little uh, screw to fasten it down, but since Lenovo uses toolless cases, you don't have to worry about that. Go ahead and pop this open. Grab our drive. And again, make sure the uh, thermal pads are there. It does help with the longevity of your SSD. You'll want to go ahead and insert your drive here into the NVMe slot. Push forward, push down and hold it as you're inserting the pin to lock it in place. At this point, we're going to go ahead and put the bottom cover back on. and then put the top cover back on as well. Everything slides together nice and easy. Just like that. And then we'll go ahead and put our screw to hold the whole entire case back together here. And from here, go ahead and plug our system back in. We're going to leave the Ethernet cord for now unplugged. Oh, a little tricky to find that. There we go. After that's all set, we want to grab our USB drive with RescueZilla already uh, burned to the uh, USB drive and insert that into our system. All right, so we have our system all reassembled and we have our system booted in RescueZilla. It is the software that we're going to use to clone the current hard drive to the new empty hard drive. And uh, if you guys turn your attention over to the screen here, I'll uh, take you through the process as I go through it as well. First things first, system is booted up into RescueZilla. It's at the pretty much the default uh, load screen here. What we're going to go ahead and do is choose the clone button down here. That will allow us to start cloning the drive from the old to the new. Go ahead and hit the next button. So go ahead and look for your drives. So what we have here is the one that's called Glow Trend. That is our external uh, drive uh, holder there that I showed you in the previous scene. So the 256 drive is in there. And as you can see, the uh, space is listed right there. And then since our new drive isn't even formatted yet, it just is listed by model number. But since it is installed in the system, you actually get the device's identifier right here. So since it's looking for the source drive, we want to go ahead and choose this one. Hit the next button. Then from there, destination drive, we'll choose the new larger crucial drive. Hit the next button. And then from here, We'll want to go ahead and make sure you choose overwrite partition table just in case the new drive already was previously used for whatever reason. It'll go ahead and grab the partition table from the original drive or the source drive and image that directly onto the new drive for you. Go ahead and hit the next button here. We want to continue on there. And it gives you a quick little uh, snippet of what is going to be happening. So it's going to tell you that SDA, which is partition one and TFS, will be going over to partition one of this drive here, and so on and so forth. And it does tell you what your destination drive is. Definitely want to double check that to make sure you're not writing your brand new blank drive to your original source drive, because that's going to end up in a bad day. All right. So you can also, in the case of say you are trying to rescue a failing drive down here, there's a checkbox to ignore file system inconsistencies and bad sectors. Um, I would only use this in the case of rescuing a failing drive on its way out, but um, just be aware that yeah, this is an option as well too. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next button, and it is gonna warn you one more time 
that everything on the destination drive will be permanently overwritten. You know, like I said before, you want to be very sure that we are writing to the current drive. Since we are sure about the drive that we're writing to, we're going to go ahead and hit the yes button. And after this, it's time to go grab a cup of coffee. I'll be back in a little bit after I finish mine. See you in a sec. And we're back. Coffee was delicious. And as you saw, the uh, clone is all completed. It took a lot less time than I expected, but you know what? It, it's going from NVMe to NVMe. It's gonna be incredibly fast. So, you know, drink that coffee fast and make sure it's not hot. Um, next thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and shut our system down and uh, get ready to uh, boot it up with our new, uh, new drive there. So, RescueZilla, kinda like Windows, little computer screen is the start button, shut down, and it's going to ask you, hey, do you really want to shut down? We do. Hit shut down and just wait for it to do its thing. There it goes. It is off. At this point, we're going to go ahead and pull our uh, USB, USB drive out of the system. Set that aside. Go ahead and power up our computer. Actually, I almost forgot to mention, we want to unplug our old NVMe drive. Definitely don't want it to boot off of the wrong one. All right, there we go. So next thing I'm going to show you how to do is, once we get logged into Windows, I'm going to show you how to expand the drive to encompass the entire new drive versus what was cloned, the old 256 gig drives. So I'll be right back and I'll show you that process here in a second. And we're back. We've got the computer all logged into our account here. And I'll show you how to go ahead and expand the current partition to match the new drive size. So what you want to go ahead and do first is definitely want to make sure that you're in an admin account because you can't do this as a standard user account. After you're logged in as an admin, you want to go ahead and right click on your Windows Start menu down here. If it's uh, Windows uh, 10, the button will be over here. Same thing though, right click on it, and then you want to go up to Computer Management. After we're in Computer Management, I want to go ahead and click on Disk Management, and you'll see that our Windows partition matches the ex exact size of the old drive. In order to go ahead and take over this unallocated space, as you can see in File Explorer, even though this is a 500 gig drive, it only sees 237 gigs or 256 gigs before formatting, or after formatting, sorry. So we'll want to go ahead and right click anywhere on the drive. You'll want to choose Extend Volume. From here, Windows has a bit of a wizard built in. Hit Next, go ahead and pick the drive, and you'll want to make sure this is all the way up. After that, hit the next button one more time, and it will go ahead and expand the drive to fill the, or expand the partition to fill the entire size of the drive. After that, let's just go down to Windows Explorer, make sure things are doing what we think they are supposed to be doing, and as you can see, we have uh, 464 gigs free, or 464 free gigs, or total gigs out of our uh, 392 free. Um, but uh, yeah, beyond that, this is probably the easiest way to go ahead and uh, expand or um, add more storage, if you would, to a current drive that's in your system without losing any data. All right, thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.